Temperature that ceramic is an instant so the current will not pass through. And the total liquid nitrogen is uh, 77 degrees Kelvin. That insulator will then turn into a superconductor. And if you throw a switch, you light that sign. So that's the first superconductor to sign. So we have a demonstration of stays at that temperature, the current will stay at the closest thing to infinity that we have. Closest thing to perpetual motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. President. I'll show you a couple of more as it's Well, this demonstrates the other property of superconducting materials, namely that when they become superconducting, they won't allow magnetic fields to penetrate them. So the little magnet that you see on top has a, a magnetic field which is repelled by the superconducting ceramic. So as long as the superconductor remains below the 77K, it will uh, repel that magnet and it will float above it. Processes like these are the ones that I think will lead to levitating trains. You can play with it a little bit it sits up. That's the ceramic, and that's the little magnet that you can float on top of. I can show you one last <laughs> experiment here, Mr. President. Perhaps if you could stand right here and look at this. I'll come around this way. This is something that I'm not sure I fully convinced Senator Baker that you should believe in. This is a <laughs> superconducting quantum interference device. This is a purely quantum mechanical machine which detects magnetic fields very sensitively. And this is the output of the magnetic field detection. And as you see, when I bring this magnet close to this sensor, which is in this flask of liquid nitrogen, the superconducting Joseph's injunctions there sense the very minute magnetic field from this permanent magnet way over here and change the phase of the output signal and it moves across the screen. As sensitive as this is, the people who built this at the National Bureau of Standards had to desensitize it by a factor of 100 so that the variations in the Earth's magnetic field wouldn't overwhelm it. This can be used for everything from measuring microscopic electrical currents in the brain to looking for submarines that are underwater. It's a very general instrument. And someday I'll convince Senator Baker that quantum mechanics works. I think you've made the whole thing up. <laughs> We're going back this way. Mr. President, now that Schultz and Shevardnadze are going to meet, would you be very optimistic about a treaty? I'm, I'm 
I'm always optimistic about that. Sir, would you consider giving Judge Bork a recess appointment while the Senate's out on vacation? I can't take it. Sir, do you really think some reporters are out to destroy you? <laughs> Don't tempt me. <laughs> well, uh, sir, we think, we think that was your statement yesterday, not Marlon's. Who turned off the lights? Last week, the Soviet Union had insisted on what could have been a major stumbling block to our double zero suggestion, the re right to retain some of its missiles currently deployed in Asia. But last Wednesday, General Secretary Gorbachev announced that he was preparing to drop this demand. <laughs> We're privileged to have here today with us many of you. back to the first principles enunciated in our Constitution 200 years ago. Set for an integrated circuit. The value of a silicon chip doesn't lie in the sand from which it comes, but in the microscopic architecture engraved upon it by ingenious human mind, a new invention, or small business. What are the creators of our economic life whose contributions may not only delight the mind, but improve the condition of man by feeding the poor with new grains? bringing hope to the sick with new cures, vanquishing ignorance with wondrous new information technologies. When our forefathers wrote guarantees of life, liberty, and property, 